Hello and welcome to the Thursday, May 13th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Industrial control systems being connected to the internet have, of course, uh, been a big topic for a few years now. And we have sort of all these news stories about water plants, for example, uh, getting hacked. So Jan took a look at some public resources like Shodan to see if there's any improvement, I mean a decrease in the number of devices connected to the internet. Now, many of the attacks, of course, that we have seen are not necessarily against the devices itself. They're more against business networks or, for example, web applications being used to manage these devices. Jan actually looked more device themselves, like, for example, exposed Modbus port or S7, which are specific protocols that are unique to these industrial devices. And according to Shodan and Census, Currently, there are about 70 to 80,000 devices exposed depending on the source you are using. Different uh, systems are sensitive for uh, different protocols. For example, Census does find a lot more Modbus devices than Shodan. Now with Shodan, Jan was able to go back to May last year. And back then we had about 120,000 devices connected. So this now is down to 80,000 devices, which is certainly heading in the right direction. But the graph is, well, uh, far from linear. So it's pretty noisy. And while there's a clear trend, the numbers themselves may be off by quite a bit. And of course, this is somewhat related to the ransomware attack that led to the shutdown of the colonial pipeline. Now, while this appear to be more sort of a traditional IT attack, we do have a special webcast on Thursday with Tim Conway and Jeff Shearer. Tim, he's actually in charge of the ICS curriculum at SANS, and they'll be talking about ransoming critical infrastructure and, uh, well, this will happen Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern, and the link will be found in the show notes. And yesterday, I mentioned the frag attacks, these new attacks against the Wi-Fi networks. Now, what wasn't quite that clear uh, yesterday was what's exactly vulnerable. Microsoft actually with the May patch Tuesday did release patches for uh, Windows. Linux is affected and has also released patches. Various uh, Linux distributions have also uh, published advisories. NetBSD and OpenBSD is not affected. And various vendors that uh, produce uh, Wi-Fi equipment have released updates. Notable here, Cisco, Dell, Intel, Juniper, Lenovo, Linksys, Netgear, Ruckus, Sykesel, and others. Didn't see anything here from Ubiquiti, but I assume them to be vulnerable as well, given that their equipment typically runs on Linux. And yesterday, well, we still have an Adobe patch uh, Tuesday. And while Flash is no longer an issue, they did still manage to release about a dozen different advisories. The one that's particularly interesting is an advisory for Adobe Acrobat and Reader that does fix a number of different vulnerabilities, one of which is already being exploited in the wild in targeted attacks. And with AirTags uh, being a hot thing right now, of course, researchers are looking more and more into some of the capabilities and how to possibly abuse them. The latest is a blog post by Fabian Breulein, who uh, looked into how to send data across the Find My network. Essentially, the way these AirTags work is there is a public key embedded in the AirTag that was created at the time when the AirTag was paired with the device. And so not even Apple is able, for example, to inspect the message that is being sent from the AirTag to the owner. And that, of course, does offer the opportunity to send arbitrary messages back to the owner. Now, the amount of data being 
sent here is very limited and uh, some of it is fixed, not controllable by the device itself. Uh, but apparently it may be able to send uh, bits per minute or bits per hour back to the user from a device that other than being able to connect uh, to some random iOS devices has no internet connectivity of its own. As a use case here, it suggests it may be possible to, for example, transmit sensor data and such, not a security vulnerability really against the owner of uh, the device. It's really more so of an abuse of the network that Apple built in order to track these devices. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.